Hi, this is Jason from Horrific Nightmares, and welcome to another Positive Spin. Now today we're going to be talking about the most hated of the Rocky films. Rocky V. Now growing up, I watched the Rocky films constantly, one through four anyway. I saw all but the first one in the theaters. And I'm talking about just a Rocky franchise. I don't consider the Creed franchise part of the Rocky franchise. I consider it kind of a spinoff. Plus, I didn't see those in the theaters. <laughs> so I saw two through Rocky Balboa in the theaters. Um, this was the movie that I saw in 1990 that kind of left me feeling empty. Like, it just wasn't... It didn't feel like a Rocky film to me. Now, over the years in watching it, because I watch these movies still, constantly, it has grown on me, and I do appreciate it for what it is. I don't think it's as bad as people say. I don't think it's as bad as how I used to think it was, even. But let's put a positive spin on Rocky V. First of all, this movie has great pacing. This movie has better pacing than some of the others in the franchise. And I'm speaking of definitely the second Rocky. Even though I love it, it does have some pacing problems. And maybe even better pacing than the first one. Because this comes full circle. This goes back to where Rocky began after his fight with the Russian. I appreciate how they show how his brain is injured. I think uh, Sylvester Stallone, first of all, I think he's a great actor. A lot of people don't take him seriously. I disagree. I think he's a great actor, and I think that part shows what a good actor he is. I like the interaction between him and his son. Now, granted, his son grew five years overnight, but I like the fact that they put Sage Stallone in this film, uh, R.I.P., Sage Stallone, and I like his interaction between him and his father. I thought it was really good. The brain damage lends itself to his troubles. Now, nobody wants to see their hero get beaten down and just kicked, but this movie takes basically everything away from Rocky, pretty much. It takes his, his uh, opportunity to box. It takes his house, because Pauly actually loses their money because he signs a piece of paper that he shouldn't have. And it just, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a rough one. I thought it was cool when he was going through his attic in his mansion and how he kind of put on the clothes back from Rocky 1. I thought that was neat because it, it's a cool homage to the first one. He does stay in these clothes. But, you know, I thought it was cool. You know, you put the hat on and everything. Uh, the interaction between him and Mickey when they filmed that extra scene. I don't even know if it was part for part four. I try to look at the hairstyle in judging how they filmed it, but they put it in this film, and it's a very touching scene between him and Mickey, and I, I think I'm glad they put it in there because it just shows that Mickey was still a big part of his life. I mean, he's got his, um, the only thing he has left, basically, is his boxing um, school. The part in the gym is very touching, of course, the part with Mickey, it's, it's, um, it feels like a Rocky film in that point. Rocky does say some funny stuff in this. I mean, he always has, you know, hit the one in the middle or, um, I see three of them out there or whatever. And, you know, there's always been funny stuff in the Rocky movies, but he's pretty funny in this one. I guess because of his brain damage, he kind of kind of lowers himself, and he says some really goofy, funny things. I, I think it's funny, anyway. I like how Father Carmine is in it, of course. 
because he hasn't been in the last couple, if I remember correctly. Of course, he's in Rocky Balboa as well. Spoiler. I like how... The end fight is... is uh, Yeah, I'm trying to read my notes. I'm trying to decipher my dialect. Oh, I like how... Um, his son trains a little bit in the place where he trained in order to fight the bullies. Um, the end fight is absolutely fantastic. I could have done without some of the music in the background, but the it's done very style, stylistically, and it's a really decent fight. It doesn't last a long time, but I'm talking about a street fight. so. And... The thing I probably love most about this film is the end credits. And you're going to say, the end credits? Does that mean you like it when it's over? Not necessarily. I love the end credits because it takes you on a journey from in the pictures that they show during the Elton John song, Measure of a Man. Thank you, Joe. I'll never look at it the same way again. But I like how they show the... the they take you on a tour of all the Rocky films up to that point. And it just tells a story with pictures. And I think that's one of the really, really cool things. Because essentially this was supposed to be the end of the Rocky franchise. So, fortunately they came out with Rocky Balboa, which I thought was an incredible film. It definitely made this film seem like a bridge film. So that's kind of why it grew on me over the years, I guess. So I do like this film now. It is still not my favorite. I I will watch it if I'm marathoning them, but it's not a go-to for me. But like I said, I do like the film. I do find it entertaining. And that's been a positive spin on Rocky Five. Let me know your thoughts. Just make sure you keep them nice. <laughs> if you hate this film, tell me tell me why you don't like it. And if you like what you're seeing here, hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, peace.